Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue talking about light. It's a very interesting and, uh, well, very difficult actually um, kind of science, type of science. Because light is actually uh, a very, very complicated subject. Well, we all know it's electromagnetic oscillations, well, oscillations of electromagnetic field, I would rather say, or electromagnetic waves. And it's uh, transverse waves, not like sound, which is longitudinal. They are going like this. They are um, making more dense as they go, and they basically oscillate the molecules of air, oscillate along the direction uh, of propagation of light, uh, of, of sound. In light, um, I cannot really say it mechanically because it's electromagnetic field, but the oscillations of uh, electrical and magnetic components are across. So the light goes this way, but electromagnetic um, field is um, oscillating uh, perpendicularly to uh, direction of uh, propagation of light. Okay, fine. Just a few words. We have discussed in the last lecture um, the interference of two rays of light which go from two independent points, like two slits in some kind of a um, object, whatever, and you have a screen and the ray from here and the ray from here towards any point here will interfere with each other. Why? Because the difference in this these two lengths. Now since there is a difference, um, if the light comes to these two points as um, let's say flat wave front um, which has exactly the same phase in these two points then according to Huygens principle this, these two points are sources of new oscillation of electromagnetic field and uh, into this particular point as let's say since AS is longer than BS, um, the number of waves here and here will be different. So if they are in phase here, they might not be in phase here. And that's why depending on the position of the S, we had dark and light spots. Now we will talk about a little bit more complicated um, case. Now in these cases, these are two well, points, let's put it this way, which are sources of um, the secondary uh, electromagnetic waves. Now we will talk not about these two very narrow slits which are basically like points in the section. We're talking about section, obviously. Um, now we will talk about a bigger um, opening. Well, it can be um, uh, the lens, for instance, in photo uh, equipment. It, it can be our uh, pupil of our eye, but in any case it's something substantial, greater than the point. Okay? So, I assume that the flat waves of light go, this is the front, and the whole thing actually is opening here. So every point gets the light and from every point um, rays go into this particular point S. So my question is, so let's say this is the middle line, middle between A and B, and AB is equal to D, and this is 
L, the difference, the distance to screen from this opening, and we obviously assume, as physicists obviously do always, that this is a very small one relative to this, because it's needed for approximation and simplification of calculations, you will see. All right, so with these assumptions, so at points, at every point, at A to B, we have opening, so the light comes in, and all these points have exactly the same phase, because we're talking about some flat uh, wave front coming into the whole thing. Now, my question is, what will be on the screen? Well, um, first of all, you will obviously have a bright spot which goes basically parallel from A uh, to a screen and from B to screen going, going down. But further outside of this bright spot, we will see again light and uh, dark um, areas. Well, if this is a slit, then we will have obviously lines on the screen. If this is a round hole, we will have concentric um, uh, light and dark circles around the center spot. Okay, but no matter what, we're talking about two-dimensional uh, section of the whole picture. So let's assume that we have this particular situation. And my question is, what will be at point S depending on, well, location of the point S? Now, if this distance is, let's say, x, so my question is, what will be at point x? Well, okay, now let's think about it. First of all, the situation is more complex than in case of uh, uh, interference, because interference, we had only two sources, points. Now we have basically all the points from A to B. Well, I, ma mathematically, I could have said infinite number of points. From the physical standpoint, I'm always kind of hesitant to say um, I infinite number of sources of light, um, because, you know, physics is different. It's, it's a real life. So photons uh, might have certain dimensions, I don't know, but in any case, whatever it is, we uh, uh, assume this mathematical model, which means every, every point, uh, which can be anywhere from A to B, uh, and S can be, again, everywhere on the screen, will have some light from all the points from A to B. Okay, great. So, we know that if two um, rays of light come in phase, they will interfere constructively, they will enhance each other. Let's say this is my one line, and this is my another line, and if I will add them together, you see, the maximum goes to maximum, so I will have greater maximum. And minimum goes to minimum, I have a greater minimum. So I will have something like this. Okay? Now, if, however, my waves are in antiphase, which means maximum goes to minimum, minimum goes to maximum, something like this. So this is the middle line, and this is the middle line. And if I will summarize them together, what will be? This is, let's say, plus maximum. This is minus the same maximum. So I will have zero. And I will have zero everywhere. So I will have a straight line. I will have no light at all. So only in case my two waves are in antiphase and what it means is what is the shift one from another this is the lambda 
which gives uh, wavelengths, right? From crest to crest. Now, here from crest to crest is this lambda. So we are shifted by how much? By lambda over 2. Right? So this graph is shifted to the right or to the left, whatever you want to say, by lambda over 2 from this graph. So these two are in anti phase, not just out of phase. Out of phase can be anything which is not uh, exactly in phase. But anti phase means exactly by lambda over 2. It means they will just cancel each other. So let's just think about one particular case. The case is AS minus BS equals lambda, delta. So delta is the difference between the longest and the shortest. Now, obviously, if you will compare the lengths of the um, ray from any point, from A to B to S, as the point will move, let's say, from B to A, the length would increase. Well, if S is on this side of the middle line, right? So every line from here would be from here would be further than the line from here, right? So as we move from B to S to, to A, it will increase. Now we are assuming that we are above, so this is this bright spot. This is the bright spot which when, when, when the rays of light go through this um, aperture, it will just go straight without any kind of interruption and it will light this particular, uh, this particular area. So I should probably put it a little bit further down to the right. It will be more obvious. So this is my straight line. S is somewhere here. So, obviously, as we move from B to A, the length of this is increasing monotonously. So, I assume that AS is by lambda greater than BS. Now, more precisely, if this is middle of this aperture, and this is x, then the length of AS would be equal to AS would be what? L square and this is x plus half of this. The, the, the opening is d, so it's d uh, over 2. So L square plus x plus d over 2 square and square root. That's the Pythagoreans here, right? Now BS would be square root of L square plus X minus D over 2 square. If this is X, then this is X minus D over 2. And the difference between them is difference between these two radicals, right? Um, now, in the previous lecture, I actually simplified it a little bit um, because AS minus BS is equal to AS squared minus BS squared divided by AS plus BS, right? P minus Q times P plus Q equal P squared minus Q squared. Everybody knows this little algebraic formula. Now, the sum, the, the difference between these two squares, let's see what will be the difference. L square would cancel with this L square, because this, we're, we're talking about square, which means we get rid of the radical and, and, uh, and minus sign. So L square goes, X square goes, D over 2 square goes, and the only thing which will remain would be 2 times X times D over 2, which is XD, 
and this is minus xd but with a minus sign so it will be plus xd so it will be 2xd now on the bottom I will have some of these two radicals and I was saying that if L is great and x and d are small then some of the uh, then each one of these this is a little bit greater than square of l square plus x square <coughs> and this one is a little less than l square plus x square but if you will add them together we might consider that approximately to equal to this with large l that's basically true so this is approximately equals to this and what is x divided by x divided by uh, square root of uh, L square now this is the line from the middle to X uh, that's basically a sign of this right we are dividing this X divided by square root of L plus square L square plus X square which is hypotenuse so it's a sign of this which is the same as sign of this which is incident angle so it's approximately this which is d times sine theta where theta is incident angle now again we are considering that the d is relatively small and these two are more or less exactly the same angle as this one so again it's a um, phys physicist level of precision it works if uh, screen is uh, on a substantial distance from the opening but in any case the precise answer is basically this now let's forget about this little formula it doesn't really matter I will write it here that delta is approximately d sine theta okay now I'm talking about one specific case when this is longer than this by lambda. That's very important now, this, the logic of this. Here is the... Now, if my difference is lambda, so as I'm going from B to A, my distance is gradually increasing until it reach, reaches the lambda at the very end, difference between these two, between, middle, b between some kind of a point M. So the difference between M S minus B S would be less than lambda but greater than zero, right? As M S is moving from B to A. Now, since my length is monotonously increasing, well, not the, not, not the length, the difference between uh, M S and B S is monotonously increasing, there is one point where the difference is equal to m to lambda divided by 2. Okay, so it's not necessarily, I mean, it's definitely not in the middle uh, of this AB, but it's somewhere. Because it grows maybe a little bit slower in the beginning and faster at the end. It doesn't really matter. So there is some point m here. Some point m here where the difference in length between ms and bs is, ex is exactly lambda over 2. Okay, so let's just consider two rays, bs and ms. Now, the difference in the length is lambda over 2, which means there is a difference in phase. That's exactly the situation which I was just talking about like this. the difference in length is lambda over 2. Well, that means that since this ray should cover, now they come here into these points M and B in, in phase, so they are together at the same time. Maximum goes to maximum, crest to crest, trough to trough. But since this is longer by lambda over 2, it will come a little later and it will be a trough uh, from the M where the crest will be 
uh, from the B or vice versa, it will be a crest from the B where trough is uh, from, the, uh, from the crest from the M where trough from the B. And what happens? They will cancel each other. Great, so we have one ray and another ray and they cancel each other. Excellent. Now, let's move a little bit from the B to just doesn't really matter by, by, by which point. It will be slightly, now it will be B prime, S, will be slightly bigger than S, plus some, something like delta. Okay. Now, delta is very small. It's definitely less than lambda. Definitely less than lambda over 2. So we did not really reach point M yet. It's somewhere between M and B. Now, since my length is monotonously increasing, I will step from the M by something where to M prime, where M uh, prime S would be, would be equal to M S plus the same delta. Since this is increased by delta, I will start moving from M to the left, and I will also find something which is greater by length by delta. Now, what happens between M, uh, um, M prime S and B prime S? Well, the difference between them is equal to exactly the same as difference between B S and uh, M S, which is what? Lambda over 2. B S minus M S, or, or M S minus B S is lambda over 2. Okay? Which means what? which means these two will also cancel each other. And now we obviously understand that for each point from B to M, I can find corresponding point from M to A with which this ray cancel that ray. And vice versa. I mean, if I will start from the M moving to the left by de some kind of a delta, I can find from uh, I can find uh, another point between M and B, which is exactly by the same delta longer than BS. And again, the difference between this and this would be always the same. So I can find from each point, I can find corresponding here with the ray cancelling this one. And from each from this, I can find this, w uh, which uh, ray would, would, would cancel this. So, what it looks like that all the rays from M to B would, uh, uh, would, would be cancelled by all the rays from A to M. It's a one-to-one -one correspondence between two segments, if you wish. Um, and uh, again, even if it's a continuum, mathematically, like a real segment in terms of infinite number of points on it, or it's a physical uh, kind of thing. If, if it's a physical, then with certain very reasonable approximation, it's still true. So for every point which is a source of secondary light, according to the Huygens uh, principle, I can find another point on this uh, 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 area from A to M, which will cancel this one and vice versa. Which means that this point S would be dark. All the rays would cancel each other. So, if this is true, if the difference between distances is lambda, then it would be a dark spot. Now, if we deviate from this point, left or right, obviously the amount of light will increase, because then I will have certain uh, rays which will find. Now, now the difference will be either greater or less than lambda, which means I will find something which is cancelling each other, but I will not find something which I, I will find something which does not have a cancellation pair. So this pairing would not work as as easily. You see, this is lambda, so I divided it with lambda uh, two and another lambda two difference. Now, if it's greater than lambda or less than lambda, 
I will not be able to do it easily. So let's just think about when is the next a really true dark spot. Well, that's very easy to say. That's two lambda. Why? Well, because if this is two lambda, I divide it by lambda and lambda. Now all the rays from here would have difference uh, uh, lambda over two and lambda lambda over two, and here as well. So it's two dark spots. Two dark spots will result in two dark spot in a dark spot. And actually, anything of this type n times lambda where n is integer number would result in a dark spot now if lambda is i mean if delta is approximately d times sine of theta that gives me basically all the different theta where we will have dark spots well, obviously, we just d d r resolve this for, for sine of theta. d times sine theta is equal to n lambda. So for h n, we will have certain value of theta, because d we know, and uh, lambda we also know. We are talking about some light, some monochromatic light. So we have the lengths of the wave of this wavelengths. So we know the theta. In a more precise calculation, if you're interested to, to do it more, more precisely with all these radicals, then it would be much more difficult to resolve it for x. If you want to resolve it for x precisely, then it would be like, uh, I would say, one radical minus another radical equals two to this, and you have to resolve it for x, which is kind of, I would probably say, you will have an equation of the fourth degree if you will square it once, then square another. That's kind of difficult, so physicists decided to do it easily. And for large L, that's sufficient um, precision. Uh, by the way, if anybody wants to uh, resolve this for x precisely, based on exact Pythagorean theorem, how this uh, equation can be presented in uh, terms of x, not not in terms of uh, uh, theta. Be my guest, send it to me, I will publish it on my website. Okay, um, now, so these are the dark spots. Now, and uh, as we're saying, the, the light spot would be in between. But where will be the, the brightest light spot? Well, it's somewhere in between the dark spots, right? Now, light will not be like exactly uh, uh, some kind of a bright and then uh, it will be a, a dark black basically part and then again uh, light and then dark no the boundaries will be um, uh, gradual so from the brightest light it will go down 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 to the darkest black basically and then again um, but uh, we can still think that something like this would be the brightest spot for every n well not for every n up to certain <coughs> up to certain um, number n we will talk about this. Now, why? Because, let's say this distance is, well, in a simple case, let's say n is equal to 0, so let's say, not 0, uh, 1, let's say, okay? So n is equal to 1. So it will be 3 second lambda, okay? Now, what happens here is the following. I can divide this area into three parts. Now, the difference between this and this is lambda over 2. Difference between this and this is lambda 2. And difference between this is lambda over 2. So I will have difference between these lengths, 3 lambda over 2. Now, these will cancel each other, because the difference between this and this is exactly lambda. 
and this will be completely uncancelled. There will be no pair which will be completely out of phase. Because to, to be out of phase you need to be lambda 2, right? But this is, the whole thing is lambda 2, and this is already cancelled, so there is no other rays. To the left it's a, it's a border, and uh, on the right all rays will cancel each other, so there are no more rays rays to cancel these rays. So all of these would actually light up this point. Or if you wish you can basically just logically do it slightly differently. Now this is two which can cancel each other, but then the light will be from this one. It doesn't really matter how you count, but one third of the total uh, number of points here would actually light up the point S. So, this is for the lights and without 0 0.5 would be for the darks. Now, again, um, just uh, think about this as a simple exercise in, I don't know, geometry, basically, no more than that. Um, and obviously we are uh, uh, approaching it very, very ap approximately here. Now, let me just uh, finish it up with, with one very, very small observation. Are these dark and light spots go indefinitely here? Well, obviously not. Because if you will use this formula, times sine of theta equals to let's say n times lambda and sine equals to n lambda divided by d now sine cannot be greater than one obviously right so these rays <coughs> will not go more than with uh, incident angle um, greater than 90 degree right so from this, n times lambda divided by d should be less than 1, and n should be less than d divided by lambda. So d is the distance between, well, the, the size of the opening, and, and lambda is the wavelength. So if you divide one by another, that's basically the number of um, lines or rings whatever you will have around this m main brightest spot which is right across this opening so there is a certain number so if d let's say is i don't know a couple of micrometers then you will have and the lambda is i don't know 700 nanometers or whatever you will, you will have basically like five five four depending on the wavelengths, obviously, and on the, uh, on the opening, size of the opening. Um, and then uh, another consideration, obviously the intensity of the light, even in the light spots, I mean, is decreasing because we are going at a greater and greater incident angle, which means these lines would be a little bit wider and um, less bright because the energy would be spread a little bit. Now, what's interesting is if you use this formula, <coughs> which does not depend on L. Now, what does it mean? If my L is further here, for instance, we will have at the same angle, we will have the same dark spot. It will be here and it will be here. So, if we will move uh, our screen further the number of spots will be light and and, and dark spots will be or lines or, or concentric rings will be the same but they will be wider each one of them will be wider obviously okay so that's it um, at conclusion i have to recommend you as usually to read um, uh, notes for this lecture so this lecture is presented on unisor.com. Uh, course is called Physics for Teens. You go to 
um, waves that's the big part of the course and uh, next under the waves you will have um, phenomena of light and the diffraction of light is one of these lectures dedicated to phenomena of light so I do recommend you to read there are some nice pictures over there much better than I do obviously um, and uh, some formulas obviously but it's always um, useful to basically read the textbook with the same exactly material as you have heard during my lecture um, okay this well, by the way I didn't mention it. the site is completely free there are no advertisement on the site so just uh, open for everybody free for all all for free um, okay with this thank you very much and good luck <laughs>